Here I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, collision detection with sprites and uh, how you can change the size of the collision boxes. So what you want to do is for any sprite to be able to detect collision, either you know what's colliding with it or or you know vice versa, you're going to have to use the SPCOL command. And in some cases whenever you just want the entire sprite including the clear space like the entire box around it to be a collision domain then you could just put the ID like here I did uh, SP collision 0 and then in some you can be specific like I did with this uh, the the platform and then the spikes that way I made sure that only the platform responds to the collision and then the sprites and then the spikes respond to a separate collision. It would be easier if I just show you. You see I've got whenever my finger is over the platform it lights up the hit platform and then whenever I touch the spikes then whenever it touches both. And as you can kind of see how those work. But here I used um, the SP hit SP to uh, detect my collision. I've got a collision for 0 to 1. That's whenever it returns true, whenever uh, sprite 0 collides with sprite 1, and then sprite 0 to sprite 2 right there. And I'm, pr I'm pretty sure I've already covered this type of collision. I just wanted to point out that you can change the size of the collision detection boxes. That's going to come in pretty handy. And that was one of the most frustrating things about the game demos that the sprite collision boxes are all off. So like in the jump game, you're constantly you, you clearly jump over the fireball but you still hit the collision box so you still die. That's, that's not something you want to put in your games.